Hey guys and welcome back to a quick new video. In today's video I will show you five mistakes about readability. So five mistakes that make your code very unreadable and that is a topic that I feel like many people underestimate. Um, so many people underestimate how important it is to write readable code because we all know what happens if we work on a personal project and then like half a year later we need to go back to some older section of our code base and we just realize um, okay it's I don't really know what's going on there. And if you wrote your code in a very readable way back then, then you will just need a lot less time to actually understand it. So yeah, in the end, you just get time from writing readable code. And imagine you are working in a company where everybody who is working on that code base needs to understand the code that you write. Then in the end, for the company, that just means money in the end if, they, if your code is readable and they just have more time of their employees to work on actual features instead of trying to understand some parts of the code base. So readability is important. And in this video, I will quickly show you five mistakes that make your code readability a mess. Starting in this little class that I prepared a view model. And here we have a simple chat service, a user model. So you could imagine we're building a chat up here with a chat service we can use to send a message to a certain user ID. Um, like, yeah, obviously the message that we want to attach. And if we want to send that as a highlighted message, um, just as an example, so we have admins and we have no admins. And if an admin sends a message, let's say that's a highlighted message. Each user then has um, a list of friend IDs. So just, yeah, a bunch of friends. Friends can send messages between each other. And here in this view model, this whole magic happens. Of course, that all is simulated and I don't have an actual chat service in behind that. So let's imagine we have our users list and we have the send message function. Um, there are already multiple readability mistakes that I implemented here. And maybe we can pause the video and spot what these could be. There are actually three mistakes in this single function. Okay, so mistake number one is inlining Lambda functions. That is something I often see people do. Um, I'm doing a lot of code reviews and this is quite common that people want to inline such lambdas here in an if statement. And this is really not so optimal. You in the end save a line of code, but every time you read this send message function, your brain needs to think, okay, what does this lambda actually evaluate to? This is not immediately clear. Of course, if you then read it, you see, okay, um, does the user list have any value that um, for which this condition is true? So is there any user that is local and that is also admin? In the end, what we want to check is if the user, uh, the local user is an admin. That is what this condition refers to. So what we should do is we should simply make that a variable. Don't be afraid of introducing extra variables to make code more readable. So well, is local user admin is equal to this lambda and then we ask for if the local user is admin and suddenly if you read this function you can just read it like a book you don't need to evaluate this um, this lambda function in your brain anymore no you can just uh, read okay we check here if the local user is an admin and if so then we send a message using our chat service so in this case since the local user is an admin we want to send the message as a highlighted message so you pass true here and else we would simply, yeah, you can see a comment explained it. If the user is not an admin, only send the message if other user is a friend. So then we check if the other user is actually a friend. You can see this is quite unreadable again. But this time there is luckily a comment explaining what it does. And that's the next thing. In my opinion, don't use comments that explain what happens. If you need a comment in your code that explains what actually happens in a certain section of your code, then you very likely don't need that comment and can instead improve the readability of that section. So what we should do here is we should get rid of this comment and take this condition again and simply save it in a variable again. So for example, our users friends, because that's what it really checks. And then we can say if our users friends then we want to send that message as a non-highlighted message. And as you can see, suddenly we don't need this comment anymore because our code is explanatory enough to, to tell everybody who reads through this function what actually happens here. Suddenly it's a lot more readable. So if you use comments, then I would only use comments to explain why something happens. So imagine you would have a function and you add some kind of artificial delay, which might sometimes be necessary. 
but just the fact that there is a delay function does not communicate why there is a delay function. So it might be there for a very good reason, because you might want to work around a certain bug or so, but if someone reading through that code doesn't know that reason, um, they won't really be able to guess that. So in that case, what you should do is simply add a comment explaining, hey, this delay exists because of that kind of bug or because of that kind of issue, then a comment makes sense. But if you explain what happens, then you can usually just improve the readability of your code by either introducing some kind of variable, an extra function, um, some kind of constant maybe or similar. But as I said at the beginning here, there is one more readability issue in this function. And that is that we don't use name parameters. I actually personally always stick to using name parameters, meaning that we can go in here, alt enter, and we can say add names to, or to call arguments. And boom, we can put these on separate lines. And this is now a lot more readable. Um, for these first two fields, it might not feel that necessary because they are just called as the parameter. But for this third field, it's really necessary because if we go back here and we just see it like this, well, we see this name here as an inline hint in our IDE that this true uh, refers to send as highlighted message. But imagine you have some kind of coworker or so who reviews a pull request of you. They won't get these inline hints. So if they see a chat service send message, true message and true, they won't have any idea what this true refers to. So that's why we want to use name parameters. And that of course only works for functions coming from a Kotlin background. If you have a Java library or so or Java classes, then you sadly can't use name parameters for that. But I would always use these for Kotlin specific functions and classes. And the same we can do down here. So again, just go in here, add names to call arguments, and then put these on separate lines. That is what I always do. It makes your function a little bit longer because you have more lines, but um, that's good if that actually helps you to improve your readability. Cool, so now we actually successfully improved the readability of our send message function. Let's get to mistake number four and five in our next file, which I prepared here. Um, so here, we want to kind of yeah, have an authentication view model, which just checks if the local user is still authenticated. So they will maybe call an API in point or so to check that if a token is still valid. We have that Boolean if they are authenticated. We have an is loading Boolean and we have an authentication error message. So if the user is not authenticated anymore, we might um, yeah, pass some kind of auth error message here. We have a repository our view model talks to and we have an auth failed exception which could be thrown if yeah, the user couldn't authenticate. And then here in our view model, looks very basic, yeah, just very basic view model stuff. We have our function that checks is authenticated. And in here, yeah, we just update our state to loading, try something, and if, it, if that fails, if we get an auth failed exception, we yeah, pass our error message here and else we don't pass any error message. So in this function, there are two readability issues. Starting with issue number one, is the name of the function is authenticated. Um, that name is not well chosen, but I still see this quite often. If you call a function is authenticated, then this is a question. And if you ask a question, you expect an answer. This function does not give you any answer. I would expect if a function is called is authenticated that it actually returns a Boolean true or false, which this function doesn't. So what this function actually only does is it checks if the user is authenticated, which is of course totally fine, but then we could also communicate that. So instead of is authenticated, we can rename this to check if authenticated, for example. And now it's more formulated as an action that we actually want to perform here, for example, in the init block, and it's a lot clearer what this function actually does. Now, on the other hand, if you have a function that actually returns something, then I would also always communicate that um, by, for example, starting the function with get to get a certain piece of data. And the last readability issue here of this class and of this video is, if we scroll up to our auth state, maybe you can spot it here, in this auth error message. The issue is that we set this to an empty string. And that is something I see so often. Um, some of you might know that I have a mentorship program where I regularly do code reviews. And this is a very common issue that I see that people are afraid of using null fields. So 
Instead of making this string nullable and setting it to null by default, they prefer to make it non-nullable and set it to an empty string by default, because nulls are kind of bad, which they really aren't. What are nulls actually used for? Nulls are used for um, to actually indicate that a value is not existing. And if we want to express that our error message is not existing, we should make that a nullable field. The problem with making it an empty string if it doesn't exist is that if you see this piece of error message maybe somewhere else in your code where it's not declared, then it's not directly clear what it means if there is no error message because you will always get a non-nullable error message and is there now an error if it's empty? Is there no error? I wouldn't be sure about that. So this could also refer to maybe an error message where just no message was passed, but there is still an error in your UI or in your, yeah, in your app. Um, that's just something that's very unclear. But if you model this as something that's null and you set it to null by default, then it's super obvious what it means if this value is actually null and it's super obvious what it means if this value is not equal to null. So you can just add a simple null check and then show your error message if it is not null. The only type of string where I wouldn't apply this principle is um, text fields. So text field states because um, for text fields I personally see the value to always be existing. So if you have an empty text field then the state would be an empty string. That makes sense to me. Um, so I wouldn't use a null string for an empty text field. Um, but in all other cases where you want to express some error messages or something similar, um, I would always make these null by default to indicate they are not existing. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit more general coding style video. Um, if so, then let me know that below and I will make more of these. Also, if you're looking for more advanced Android premium courses, I have a bunch of these on my website, which you can find down below. So if you are looking to become an industry ready Android developer, I will have just the right courses for you. Do check it out. First link in this video's description. And apart from that, I wish you an excellent rest of your week and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.